Hello and welcome to this new Construct 3 tutorial where I will be showing you how to create dynamic isometric roads. So here I have the application running already um, and maybe it's hard to see but those are isometric grass tiles and if I just use my mouse to go over them like that it automatically creates roads and it will automatically uh, create the junctions between the roads as well and clicking with the right mouse button will remove a road piece and double clicking will create a, a crossing across the road that's how it works now let me show you how that works exactly so here we have the layout and the layout is pretty simple actually the game layout it starts off empty uh, because the background is generated at runtime it starts off by generating base tiles and base tiles basically serve as placeholders for creating of other objects such as roads and other stuff um, but in this uh, game i will only be showing you how to create roads um, the placeholders have their own layer as well as the roads the roads are grouped into a road family because they share a common behavior. The logic is separated into several event sheets. The surface setup takes care of the initial setup of the background. The roads event sheet contains all of the logic for the roads and the interaction uh, layer takes care of the user interactions such as padding and zooming. And finally, the game event sheet is the main event sheet attached to the game layout. So there's a also, uh, the separate object types are instantiated in the tiles layout. And let me just move over there. Um, here we have it. Here we have, on the one side, we have a base tile. And you can see that it's a pretty large uh, base tile, uh, actually, because it's isometric. And we need to respect those, um, those dimensions, of course. And I've uh, replicated just five base tiles to calculate. Uh, what the offset, the X and the Y offset should be uh, a, bit, a bit in a visual manner. And the other tiles here, as you can see, are um, also the same isometric size and the uh, same isometric layout. So they can be um, put next to each other without, um, without any seams between uh, the different tiles. Um, Alright, now Let's see, we have a uh, road. If I go here to the roads folder, you can see that there are several road types and I've ended up giving them some meaningful names. Uh, for example, this is a road end down. So it's ending downwards. It's ending to the left, ending to the right, and ending to the up uh, direction. It's a horizontal road. It's a horizontal road with a crossing. It's a split going uh, a split down and a split up. A road junction and stuff like that. So they work in the same way. And they are grouped into the roads family like that. So here you're also seeing that what inherits from the uh, tiles family. They're also grouped into the tiles, by the way. Roads are, the roads are grouped into roads and the tiles are grouped into tiles. But as you know, in Construct 3, some object types can be included in multiple um, families. So that's what happened with the roads. Uh, tiles have a tile type, which can be either grass or road. And roads don't have anything, they're just grouped together. Right? That's how these uh, tiles look like. So if you go to the main game um, event sheet, actually, you can see here that the other uh, event sheet have been included here, include road strip setup and interaction. And in this little part uh, of the code, um, we start off by generating the base tiles because they serve as placeholders for other uh, objects, actually. And we do that just by calling the generate base tiles function. So next, we need to read the road matrix JSON file. You can see that here, there is a key, 
and there's a value and the value is uh, typically uh, the object type name of one of the roads here at the right hand side and then there's a key with 16 possibilities so we read that road matrix uh, JSON file to help determine which road pieces need to be spawned in each situation so the road matrix of the dictionary holds 16 keys as some kind of binary code for example 0000 1 etc etc the digits represent on a side in order left up right and down that means 0000, 000 means that there are no roads on either side of the evaluated road piece and 1111 means that there are roads surrounded in the evaluated road piece so a junction needs to be spawned in that case so we uh, read the JSON file uh, using, using the Ajax plugin we wait and then we load it into the dictionary and then we generate the grass tiles the grass patches to be replaced upon road creation that, that's actually what happens so let's go look at this generate base tiles so the generate base tiles function this function creates the base tiles on the screen that serve as placeholders these placeholders act as a reference for clicking and creating other content on the game layout in order to create them in the correct z order the tiles are creating starting from the top right and moving to the top left while creating diagonals from top left to top right so this is done in a while loop until the x variable is far enough to the left to cover the entire layout so we call the generate dialog function to effectively create the tiles so how should you see it so how should you see it actually let's zoom out a bit and we're uh, having our layout here and we start from over there from the top right and we then do, do that diagonal that diagonal that diagonal and so forth and so forth from top right to top left and the diagonals are created from left to right left to top to right bottom like that that's how this works and at that time we can effectively see where is it here uh, effectively see that um, every tile is created in the correct C order. So we start by uh, setting a variable called xvar to the layout width plus 45 and then we go to the left in a while loop while xvar is bigger than minus layout height times 2 because the farther we go to the left and we create diagonals if we were to stop just at 0 that would mean that it would create um, it would not create the bottom left set of the tiles so we go we have to go farther uh, to the left actually so then we create a diagonal starting from the x of our uh, variable and we subtract 90 which is the width uh, of such a tile from x var and so we create the diagonal using the generate diagonal function we pass it an x and this function creates a diagonal from top left to bottom right starting at a certain x coordinate given as a parameter it does that until it reaches the right side of the layout so here uh, we set cur x to x and while x is smaller or equal than the layout width plus 45 we just and if the x and y are still within the limits of the layout of course otherwise we would be spawning too many base tiles um, and then we just move it to the top of the layer that's what we do um, increase the variable that makes the next baseline tile add 45 to the x and 26 to the y so as it's isometric the height is less than the width so the width would be 45 and the height would be 26 and then on game start also the generate grass is um, uh, created actually so we create grass on top of every base tile and do so um, in Z index order actually to make the grass tiles uh, have the uh, correct Z index as well so for each base tile order by Z index ascending as we do, what we do here so we create the object and then we move it to the top of, layer, of the layer and you'll see in a minute that once we create the roads the grass uh, will be replaced so let's go to the roads 
uh, this is the bulk actually of uh, the creation and it's actually got a lot of um, a lot of helper functions so the first set of helper functions so that has road left and has road right has road up has road down helper functions actually uh, use another function called uh, get road left get road right get road up and get road down uh, to uh, return a boolean yes or no and as always I don't use booleans I don't like booleans I just return a zero or one so if it's got a load if it's got a road on the left side it will uh, return a one else it will return a zero so the get road left right etc um, will pick a road overlapping x minus 45 and y plus 26 because those are um, the um, uh, the boundaries or the, the width and the, the height respectively of such an isometric tile um, and it actually will result in the UID of that road um, that's what it does it does that for the left for the right etc um, get load left does x minus 45 y minus 26 right x plus 45 y plus 26 and stuff like that so hard coded to see if there's a road to the left or to the right on the screen at that moment um, get road matrix this helper function constructs the key for lookup in the road matrix which consists of four zeros or ones each determining if a road is on the left up right or down based on that key the correct object type can be fetched from the road matrix so it's basically very simple we make result value and it's a concatenation of uh, has road left has road right has road uh, up and down which we will uh, which will result in a one or a zero and we're just concatenating that to each other that's it has road piece will just tell us if it has a road piece at a certain x and y coordinate um, and the effective create road piece function is, is the function that creates a road piece uh, first it checks if there is a tile on a given x and y coordinate and if there is it destroys the road if there is one that means that it needs to be replaced with another piece of road depending on its surroundings only if the road needs to be replaced or when the force flag equals one, given as a parameter, the road is created. So we pick a tile overlapping X and Y, and we first destroy the road if there is one. And we just set a flag called tile exists. And if that tile existed, or we have a boolean called force create is one, we get the construction matrix. We just saw that it gives us a string with ones or zeros. We get the road tile. From it which is the name of an object type and then you create that road tile we pick the grass and we destroy the grass if there is a grass patch at the x and y coordinates to rem remove it in order to uh, avoid having too many sprites on screen of course now create road first we uh, create the road piece at a given x and y coordinate force it to be created regardless is if there is one already or not so we have this create road piece which is this function here where we force the creation of the road piece so for a slight moment we have to wait for a slight moment for a game engine to uh, register the new row so it can be pickable in the next function so next we re-evaluate root piece to the left, right, up and down of the created root piece to see if there needs to be a change according to the new situation. Um, and that also calls this, the create root piece here for a coordinates plus 45, plus 26, plus 45, minus 26, etc. And calls this function and it only creates the road depending on its surroundings if there was a tile already because the first create is passed as a zero here remove root piece uh, pick the road at the x and y coordinate given as a parameter destroy it and replace it with a grass tile that's what it does here we create the grass tile first we wait and then we, again we have to um, see uh, around the grass tile if other road pieces need to be changed as well according to their new surroundings after uh, destroying the road and creating the grass 
So again, with force grid set to zero. So when the cursor is over base tile on the left mouse button is down, um, and it does not have a road piece yet, we will decorate the road at the base tile X and Y coordinates. Um, when the right mouse button is down, we will call the remove road piece function instead. And double clicking um, means we just uh, get X and Y coordinate for the road. If it's a vertical road, then we create a vertical crossing. When it's a vertical crossing, we just create a vertical road. And the same thing for horizontal and um, horizontal crossings. And the last interaction event sheet here is pretty simple. We panning we do with the middle uh, mouse button. Um, and we do that by setting a flag, panning or not. So when the mouse button is clicked, we retain the last X and Y coordinate of the mouse and we set that flag. And while it is down and the panning flag is set here, we, um, we scroll to the scroll X minus the mouse X minus the last pan X divided by the layer scale because we're going to be zooming in and out as well. And we do the same thing for the mouse Y minus pen last Y. And that is what we're doing here. Um, the middle mouse button is released, then we're no longer panning and we set the panning to zero. Actually, that's what it happens. And then this and then this event will not get called anymore. So zooming on mouse will down will just increase the layout scale. Uh, mouse will up will reduce the layout scale. That's basically it. That's how uh, the road creation worked. I hope you liked it as always please like and subscribe and i will leave a link in the description of the video to the Surya store where you can get this little template thank you for watching